Hey guys, welcome back to a new episode of the Coach's Corner. Uh, last week we introduced an old flame, but this week we've got a new flame that's been added to the Squat Club family. Zach Grant, welcome to the team, mate. Thanks, pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Excited or are you nervous? What's the feel? Both. Yeah. Both. I'm sure I'll enjoy being here. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> you gotta get used to being in front of the camera here at Squat Club. <laughs> of course. You could be less awkward than me, though. <laughs> of following macros rather than meal plan is that it teaches you more. Like anyone can follow a meal plan, anyone can say, okay, eat this, this and this, but so I'm going to teach you why you're doing that and why you're eating that. Like why are you going to eat one boiled egg in the morning? Mm. Why, you know, if you know, okay, well if I have, I have to eat this much protein because it's going to help me, you know, then it's going to be easier to understand, you know, why you're doing it. You're going to be able to set yourself up for the future as well. Yeah. It's going to teach you how to be sufficient and what you need to do and how to do it. That's a big, big reason to why people receive it, get results is because they have an understanding of why they're doing things as opposed to just following a mm. template. Anyone can say, okay, eat three strawberries in the morning, but why? Mm. Why would you do that? Yeah. Just so know what you do enjoy. <coughs> eat mm. foods that you enjoy. Um, so if you get put on a meal plan that's just like generic, yeah, eat these foods and you enjoy it, it's going to be so much harder for you. Yeah. To stick to, and then long term, you want to be able to, you know, educate yourself and eat the foods that you enjoy, but still lose weight and keep it off. And then you, know, yeah, you were saying that education, you know how to eat them. My friend was telling me yesterday she bought this meal plan and she has a boiled egg for breakfast. She has steak and vegetables at lunch. And I'm like, that's like, why? How are you doing that? How are you sticking to that? She's like, oh, I just do what they say. I'm like, oh, okay, but what, what about when it's over? What are you gonna do? Yeah. You know what I mean? Not robots. Yeah. Yeah. Every, like a lot of clients will say to me, oh, I can't have a meal plan. And like, I think meal plans have a place, they do. For people who've never, like, we're in a position where they have to lose body fat, I think, and where it's gonna be detrimental to their health. I think that's meal plans have a place, but like you guys, which is like spot on, like, it doesn't teach you the, why you're eating the foods. Like, like, there's no reasoning behind, just eat this. Well, why am I eating it? Exactly. Um, and, it's, can you do it in a year? Can you do it in two years? It's going to stick to that piece of paper for the rest of your life, or are you going to actually set up something, set up some structure, some good habits that can last you the rest of your life? Then you can tell your kids and then tell everyone else and teach other people. I think that's probably the best thing as well. And you know your portion sizes, so you'll be able to control your portion sizes. So then if you're not tracking, and the goal would be to maybe not track long term, but yeah, exactly. then you'll be able to go, okay, you know what, you're going out for dinner and you like your cake, so that's protein, that's carb, that's a fat. I need these portion sizes. This is what I've eaten over the day. And it's a lot easier to maintain yeah. what you've eaten and maintain that long I think as well, like, yeah. You understand mm. food, you understand what a macronutrient is and a micronutrient. Yeah. And, like, I think it's not a question of should you track or should you um, follow a meal plan. I think you can, you can eat, like, to what, like when you're hungry, you can, once you get that structure, like if you're eating this all over the place, you're not gonna know if you're losing body fat or whatever, like, but if you have a set structure, you don't have to track, you don't have to follow a meal plan, but that's generally good tools to get you started, like, okay, how much food am I eating? If I eat that much food, do I lose weight? Do I put on weight? Okay, from there can I adjust? And then you've got skills to be like, I don't have to track, I don't have to follow a meal plan, but I know if I eat this and that, I'm gonna stay pretty much like I am. Or if I go a little bit lower, I know that I'm gonna lose a little body fat. Like, that's kind of the structure yeah, that's exactly right. So the weight will fluctuate all the time, you might be dehydrated the night before and then you wake up even more dehydrated, you might have food in you from the day before and it's still in your stomach from the day after, you go to the toilet and you guarantee you'll, you'll probably lose maybe half a kilo just from doing that. <laughs> uh, I've been saying that unless you are in a sport for example like powerlifting or maybe even CrossFit that has weight classes, that's probably the only reason to probably look at the scales, a better um, measurement is to go around and measure your arms, your waist, your legs and see how, much, see how many centimetres you've lost. But other than that, I wouldn't even bother looking at the scales. Yeah. It's un completely understandable as to why, mm. because people often associate uh, weight loss with body fat loss. It's not always the case. It might be that to begin with, but I wouldn't completely look at it for sure. I'd rather look on appearance, photos, and Definitely. measurements here. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And how the people are feeling as well. You, know? yeah. you want to make sure, like, first and foremost is, are you feeling good, you know? And then, you know, like, measurements, like we're saying girth <coughs> measurements, and then, you know, how are you fitting in certain clothes? Um, but the weight scale was like one of the least things that we would look at, you know, especially as coaches. I guess the ultimate goal, I say, for people if they want to lose weight, when they fit into their clothes, they're going to feel good. I'm sure yes. the, the number on the scales is not going to matter, <clears throat> as long as they feel good. 
where they are. Yeah. So that is the ultimate goal. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, person Yeah, like you and I, Ash, for example, we weigh the same, but you're certainly a lot bigger than me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna say that. <laughs> Pay you later, mate. Sure. <laughs> Pay you later. Get it into the bo boss's good books. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is true, though. <laughs> Alright. Stop it. Oh, Ash, you got him, man. Why don't you drink first? <laughs> Yeah, that's really, that's really, yeah. Well, I guess with this person, I guess, did they say they had a, uh, a love-hate relationship with the scale? So yeah. When you do get closer to, like, an ideal body composition, weight doesn't matter as much. Like, it, does, it probably would make, like, a big difference when you are bigger, but mm. once you do get closer to your ideal body composition, you shouldn't worry about it as much because, you know, you might be putting on muscle that's going to add weight, obviously, or, you know, yeah, it's more important is how you feel and how, you know, if you're happy with how you feel. And most of the time people, if they're weighing themselves each day, like, oh my god, I've gone up half a kilo. Well, you haven't gone up half a kilo of fat because yeah. that's probably not possible. Say, yeah. Probably could be stress, hormonal, like, mm -hmm. water retention, everything like that. So I wouldn't get caught up on the numbers, that's right. Yeah. I think, you know, if, if you still want to weigh yourself for some, for some, some reason, you know, make sure that it is um, yeah, consistent. So if you're doing it, you should be doing it like on a, on a fasted stomach, um, emptying your bowels, doing it the first thing in the morning, and then, you know, if you want to do it the following week, or if you want to do it the, the next month, or if you're doing it every day, make sure you're consistent. Don't be doing it at night time because everything's going to fluctuate, you know, with what you've been eating, like Zach was saying, and you know, that time of the month, or if you need to go to the bathroom or not. So, if you are going to do it, then make sure it's some sort of have some, some sort of consistency, you know, when doing it. Like about this last week, I think we like went on a rant. Like, if, if you are, yeah, look at your recovery, and then if, if your recovery is great, maybe just look at the volume. You could be doing like um, all compound lifts, heavy squats, heavy, like, and just doing too much of it, like highly fatiguing exercises. Maybe look at that as well. Um, but are you more yeah. stressed than normal? Yeah, yeah. could be also a fact of factoring a deload week as well. Um, they are very useful, I know I use that my clients as well is just trying to reduce the overall volume um, for a period of a week and then they're able to start to increase again and the fatigue is fatigue is gone you know yeah. so it could be a factor it doesn't, yeah it doesn't necessarily have to be like taking away a training day like you can still you can change like the amount of volume you're doing the intensities you're doing um, and really just take a deload like, week because you know, like if you are training like for long periods of time and consistent pushing yourself you might be redlining yourself so that's where a deload does come in, it gives the whole system time to adapt and then you hit the, hit the ground running again. So, yeah, you can, you, if you have the capacity to train five days, then yeah, maybe look at other ways. Yeah, you can definitely. <laughs> so, um, a few things I'd suggest is the um, vodka and soda, lime. So, drink that. Um, make sure. No wine? You love your wine. I love <laughs> <laughs> Red wine is good too. <laughs> um, but drop your carbs for the day. So focus on what you're eating through the day, or even leading up to it as well. You can pull a few carbs um, leading up a few days, so then you'll be having, say, a big carb load on a Saturday or Friday if that's what you do. So make sure that you get your protein. Um, still make sure you get your micronutrients in, so your fruits and your vegetables and your fibre, and then have a and don't turn a day into a week. Yeah. And the other thing you can do too is also like the next day after, um, reduce your calories as well. And that's the way, like maybe skip breakfast or like that. Yeah. And skip that kebab. I mean, of course, that's it. Yeah. 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 That's Hydrate that too, make sure you're high. Yeah. <laughs> Was it a uh, Sunday and a thick shake or something? Yes, uh, <laughs> um, just make sure you stay hydrated. So. Yeah, drink, drink plenty of water in between yeah. as well. Um, a nice little hack as well is you, you could plan something big for the following day, you know, which would probably not make you not want to drink as much that night before. You know, yeah. You want to be uh, hung over for whatever the activity is that you scheduled. I used to want to enjoy life, like yeah. training yeah. and nutrition. If you have, if you've set up a good structure for every day and you do that, adhere to that every day, one day is not going to do yeah. much. Yeah. Like it's it, like you don't put on body fat from eating one 
McDonald's meal. Like you're not gonna like you know what I mean. Take yeah. a take a step back and look at the big picture. Unless big picture, yeah. unless this is more like you you got a competition coming yeah, up. Yeah, that's different. Like, this is your life. It's you know, it's like if you're asking that question now, like oh can I I can't go out drinking this week and have fun with my friends. Mm. Then what about next weekend? What about weekend after that? You know, you, you gotta enjoy your life. So um, take a step back, put a big picture in mind, and you know, put in these strategies to balance everything out. And of course, you're gonna go out and have fun. So. It's all part of it. You should enjoy the whole process, yeah. regardless, and know how to manage it all. If it's unrealistic, if you know you have to change your whole life, like yes, you have to change your life, but if you can't have fun and enjoy it, then you know, you're not gonna. Yeah. If someone restricts you from doing like that, then make sure you just run far, far away from that person. <laughs> and just hit up Abby. She goes out every week. She's <laughs> ready for a party. <laughs> She's a party. <laughs> All right, that's all the questions we've got for you guys this week. If you have a question for our next episode, then make sure you shoot it to our Instagram page, Squat Club AU, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.